It's Monday night, and you know what that means. Downstairs Entertainment, in association with Davey Boy Productions, presents Rex Riveter, Private Eye. This season builds on the characters and plot lines from previous episodes. So, if you haven't caught up, we recommend you go back and listen to the episodes you missed. We'll be here when you get back. Welcome back. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Rex Riveter, Private Eye in... Murder Riveter. Here you are, your royal highness. Home sweet home. You're a peach, Monroe. Ain't I, though? (laughs) Now, before I leave and take the keys with me, is there anything you'd like to say? Like? Like, Officer Monroe, I confess to the whole thing. Please lock me away forever as I am a danger to the public. (laughs) What's the charge again? Charges, Riveter. Plural. Okay, I'll bite. What are the charges? Plural. Murder, Riveter. Murder, Riveter. Why would anyone want to do that? I could think of a couple of reasons. (laughs) I bet you could. You shot and killed Gerald Sullivan and Father Emilio Lozado at St. Viviana four nights ago. No kidding. What was my motive? You're a crazed lunatic. Can you prove it? That's the DA's job. All that matters to me is that you're right where I want you. Surely you must have some ideas. Don't know. Don't care. Maybe it had something to do with that girl that drowned in Hollenbeck. The one you were in here asking questions about. Dolores. What? The girl had a name. Dolores Espinosa. Sure, Riveter. She's not what's important here. What's important is that you killed Sullivan and Lozado. And I'm nailing you for it. What do you think you're doing? Getting comfortable. I don't think you're taking this seriously. It's been a long day. I've been on the road and I'm pretty beat. So if you're going to try and prove I killed both of those men, I might as well get some shut eye. Don't you worry, Riveter. I know what you did. I have it on good authority. A speedy trial and then the gas chamber for you, pal. (laughs) And I'll be there to watch them drop the pellet. You can count on that. I'm exhausted. I'd driven through the night from Las Vegas to San Diego and then home to the city of Angels. Jenny and I had eaten early this morning. I haven't had anything since. My head is starting to pound. But that isn't my biggest problem. That title is reserved for Officer Monroe, Homicide Division of the Los Angeles Police Department. He said he had it on good authority that I'd committed two murders. He was half right. I shot Sullivan. Three times. Maybe four. I lost count. The last one was fatal. Just as if I planned it. I never touched the Padre, though. That one was on Sullivan. I slipped out of the church before the cops arrived. But I couldn't be sure no one had seen me. The gun I used went down a drain somewhere near Chinatown. But maybe it had been retrieved. If they ran the serial numbers, maybe they could trace it back to Hephaestus. And maybe he dropped the dime on me. Not that I could blame him. He didn't owe me a thing. Quite the opposite. Sullivan had raped and murdered Dolores Espinosa. When we confronted him, 
he killed the priest. And I killed him. Everybody's guilty. I sit in my cell for a while. But eventually, Monroe returns. And he's got company. Riveter. Inspector! Knock it off. You enjoying your stay so far? Eh, I'm a little disappointed. I expected there to be somebody in another cell playing the harmonica. Or banging a spoon against the bars, yelling out that he was innocent. Do you know why you're here? Still haven't bought admission to the policeman's ball. You're a scumbag, Riveter. Wow. Some people take their ticket sales seriously. I'll show you what I take seriously. All right, quiet, both of you. Monroe, stand over there and don't say another word. Riveter, you've been brought in for questioning about a murder. So I hear. What have you got to say for yourself? Give me a spoon and I'll tell you. Am I a suspect? You're what we call a person of interest. Oh, so no proof. We have witnesses. Witnesses? What did I say, Monroe? We have a witness. So, why not book me? I wanted to give you an opportunity to give your side of the story. Riveter? I've got nothing to say at this time, Inspector. So you're just going to lay there? Unless you're planning on letting me go. No way, Burke! That's my collar! Burke spins on Monroe. And for a moment, I thought there was going to be an altercation outside my cell. But, rank takes over. The fact that the lieutenant has three or four inches and thirty pounds on his side probably doesn't hurt either. Eventually, Burke turns back to me. Riveter? I know you've suffered some loss, but it won't protect you from this. If you're guilty, it's best to speak up now. Otherwise, the full force of the Los Angeles Police Department will come down on the guilty party. Have it your way, Riveter. Monroe, take him to room three. I'll be along shortly. Sure thing, Lieutenant. Come on, Riveter. Let you and me take a little walk, huh? So... No harmonica? Don't let my poor attempt at humor fool you. I'm in pretty deep. Monroe is the cat, which makes me the mouse. He cuffs my wrist behind me and escorts me through the bullpen. Smiling like the Cheshire cat, we end up in a familiar room. It might be the same as the one where I first met Burke months ago. He questioned me about a murder that took place in my own office. That fact wouldn't sit well with potential clients. A murder had taken place right where they were sitting. Thankfully, the newspaper skimmed over that fact in their report. I imagine these interrogation rooms are designed to look the same. It adds to the disorientation the suspect is supposed to feel. It's small, purposely uncomfortable. I guess it's supposed to throw you off, mess with your noggin, and give the boys in blue an advantage when they question you. I try to kid myself into thinking it won't work on me. Then I realize I'm not a great liar, which only adds to my concern. After Monroe takes off my bracelets, he stands so the overhead light is in my eyes if I try to look at him. He begins the dance. All right, Riveter. Let's begin. This table is set for three. Shouldn't we wait for the rest of our party? I'm not letting Burke in to screw up my investigation. He'll have to catch up later. He won't like that. Let me worry about him. You should concentrate on yourself. You were in here a few days prior to the murders, asking about that Mexican girl's drowning. Say her name. She was a parishioner of Lazaro's. Say her name. I went and spoke to her madre, who told me you and the priest had paid the family a visit. While you were there, Sullivan came by to offer his condolences. Is that where you met him? Her mom made a positive ID of you, so I know you were connected to Lazaro. I also went by Sullivan's office and spoke to his secretary, who said you paid him a visit there. 
So now you're connected to him, too. Which one? What? Which one? Joan or Sheila? Uh. Joan. Receptionist. I put her at maybe five foot six. Horn rim glasses. Five five. Well, she was behind a desk. Reverter, I don't think you're taking this serious. So you admit to being there? Sure, I was there. I was looking into Dolores Espinosa's murder. But you already know that. If that's all you got, I'll be on my way. Sit down! I ain't done yet. I also got the testimony of a cabbie who picked up a man fitting your description at the corner of 3rd and Grand. Isn't that where your office is at? I don't recall. Said cabbie dropped off said scumbag in front of St. Vibiana's at approximately 9 p.m. on the night of the murder. According to witnesses, shots were fired at approximately 9.30 p.m. It was you in that cab. You shot and killed Gerald Sullivan and Lozado. Admit it! Circumstantial at best. Uh, it might go faster, Rex, if you just tell us where you were that night. If you're clean, then we can start looking for the real killer. Riveter is the real killer, Lieutenant. You'd see that if you were a good cop and not some Bible thumping. Bert grabs Monroe and throws him against the wall. Be careful of your words. I am a good cop. But even I have my limits. A good cop doesn't let killers walk free. I know the stories. Peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. James chapter 3, verse 18. You're treading on thin ice. Are you hearing me? Sure thing, Lieutenant. You're coming in loud and clear. If you two want to put on the gloves, I know someone who could give you- Quiet, Riveter! Please, proceed, Sergeant. Okay, where was I? St. Viviana's. I took a cab there from my office and shot Gerald Sullivan. Uh, your words. Right. The other witness saw too. I was going to confess. I knew it. The statement I had just made was a trial run to see if it changed anything in me. It didn't. But I decided to spill the beans anyway. Not because I felt anything over what I'd done. Sullivan deserved to die. He had raped and murdered Dolores Espinosa. And if the look on his new secretary's face, Sheila, was any indication, he had already started in on her. It wasn't guilt that was compelling me. I just... I just didn't see any other way out of this. A trial would draw newspapers. Something I didn't want. After the weekend's events, I would rather not draw any more attention to myself or... or Jenny than I absolutely had to. The problem was Monroe. Something about his smug face and tone. No one should feel that amount of pleasure with anything connected to... to Dolores' death. There was no way I was going to confess what I'd done to him. That left Burke. He had been a pretty good egg, I suppose. He came down to tell me of Jenny's death, personally, instead of sending someone else. His association with me and my arrest might hurt his reputation on the force a bit, but if he got the story himself, it might save him a little embarrassment. Yeah. That was the way to go. Tell my tale to Burke. Admit it! You killed Sullivan and the priest! Well, Riveter, what have you got to say? I'll tell the whole story. Finally! But only to Burke. What? You heard me. I'll tell the whole thing, but not while you're here. This is wool, Lieutenant! Language! It's my case! It's my call, Riveter! Those are my terms, Inspector. Take it or leave it. You 
can't be considering this, Lieutenant. Since when do we let criminals dictate Out. our procedures? What? Out, Sergeant. What? I'll you... take Riveter's statement. Thank... The arrest is still yours if it comes to that. Monroe! I want to go on notice. This thing... This is bull. I'm not too smart sometimes, but I'm not dumb enough to hit a cop in police HQ. So while he has me by the lapels, I do the only thing I can. Say her name. Monroe, let him go. And get the door on your way out. What? What do you want? Riveter? Inspector? I'm waiting. All right, Lieutenant. Let's get this over with. I'm ready to make my statement. Yes? Oh, it's you. Can I come upstairs? Hmm. Are you finished writing? No, but can I come up anyway? It's it's scary down there. Scary? I'm pretty sure there are burrows and channels behind the walls. Ugh. You've been listening to the Tunnels podcast again, haven't you? Yes. How many times have I told you not to listen to that podcast alone? Because it's so scary? No, because I want to listen to it too. But- Look, you will be fine. The Tunnels is a serialized docudrama about the passageways found beneath Griffin. A small town in Georgia. We are not in Georgia. We are in California. So? So, the narrator, Robert Chauncey, takes you on a journey to discover what they are and how they came to be there. He also uncovers their connection to the Spalding Institute and tries to uncover what the strange sound is that can be heard within them. Now, is Robert Chauncey in our basement? I don't think so. Are you Robert Chauncey? No, but... Noises, exactly. I just heard some strange racket coming from the walls just now. I'm pretty sure it was Ezekiel (laughs) Kane. That was just Mama Dog. I gave her a bite of pizza. You know how much she loves pizza, don't you, Mama Dog? Wait, how is it you can listen to the tunnels while you're in the dungeon? A a writing room. Oh, I had Randy hook me up some internet the last time he was here. I can listen to all the Fate Crafters shows down there on my favorite podcatcher. And I can even go to the Tunnels website at www.tunnelspodcast.com. Hang on. Did I hear you say you had pizza up here? Can I have a piece? Have you finished the case yet? Almost. Well, then you can have some when you're done. Pizza is for closers. (sighs) Pizza is for closers. (laughs) I'm sure David Mamet would love that. Welcome back. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Rex Riveter, Private Eye in Murder Riveter. (sighs) I'm waiting. All right, Lieutenant. Let's get this over with. I'm ready to make my statement. Don't say another word, Rex. Get out of here, you little... Who the hell are you? Angelo Martin, attorney at law. We've met before, Lieutenant. Oh, what do you want? I am Mr. Riveter's counsel, and I'm here to advise him. No! Advise him? He was about to make a statement. So he hasn't made one yet. Who let this guy in? Not yet. According to California Penal Code 69875, paragraph 3... Those holding custody of arrested persons should honor attorney requests for a private, barrier-free meeting room upon request. All right, all right. There's no need to quote the penal code. He was just about to confess. Give a statement. This is bull, Lieutenant, and you know it. Do I need to remind you of the pecking order around here, Sergeant? No, Lieutenant. I know how things work. Good. Counselor, you can use this room. Uh, can I trust that you will turn off any recording devices? Of course. Because, of course, anything recorded would not be admissible in court. Of course. You'll have your privacy. Come along, Sergeant. Lieutenant! Sergeant! Riveter! Sorry. Nobody's yelled my name in a while, and I was starting to feel left out. Angelo? Rex. 
to what do I owe the pleasure? I got a call from... a mutual friend. I was told you might need my services. <laughs> Jenny. Shh, 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 shh. Angelo holds a finger to his lips and then points around the room. He doesn't believe the LAPD has turned off any hidden microphones. And people call me suspicious. Did this friend tell you the situation? Only that you've been arrested on suspicion of murder. Do you know who I killed? Allegedly killed. Allegedly killed. I don't know, and I don't care. You're a hell of an attorney. <laughs> With that kind of attitude, you should be rolling in dough. Well, as long as I'm comfortable and helping others, that's enough. What law school teaches that? Uh, let's discuss your case. Now, who is the victim of the alleged murder? Victims, plural. Oh, all right. Uh, who are the victims, plural, of the alleged murders? Gerald Sullivan and Father Lozado. Oh, um, I see. Look, Angelo, I appreciate you coming down here. But my situation hasn't changed much. I, I can't pay you. Have you ever heard of karma, Rex? Sure. It's the belief that the sum of one actions in this life determines their fate in future lives. Correct. Well then, I'm afraid I'm in for a pretty poor ride next time around. Or perhaps you're paying for your past discretions. Either way, what's that got to do with me and my problem? Maybe I'm just stockpiling some good karma. For later. Just in case. I thought you were Catholic. <laughs> Rex, this is 1955. Almost 56. We're not in the Dark Ages anymore. A man can have multiple beliefs. Or none at all. Although a man that believes in nothing... Well... I don't know what happens to someone like that. I do. They become private detectives. Has anyone ever told you you're a cynic? Every morning, when I'm shaving. <laughs> That's... Honestly, I don't know what the hell that is. Look, Angelo, I appreciate you coming down here, but I don't think there's anything you can do for me. This thing's going to come out, and uh, when it... He holds a finger to his lips again. This time his head is cocked towards the door. I believe the reinforcements are here. Angelo stands and opens the door. Outside, it's Out a zoo. Trouble. He was in the audience all night. Just ask anyone. Lou the owner will vouch for him, and so will Jimmy, won't you? Carse well, it's like Lila here says. The reinforcements consisted of Lila, Sloan, and his little brother, Andy. They were going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Los Angeles' finest. Angelo and I wandered out from the interrogation room and into the bullpen. I don't care if Jesus Christ himself vouches for him. Rex Riveter is guilty! Tread lightly with the Lord's name, Sergeant. Careful of your tone there, mister. That's me wife you're talking to. Soon to be. Excuse me. And who the hell are you three, anyway? Your name's Sloan, and this is me brother, Andy. Now, folks... <laughs> I'm sure we can get to the bottom of this without any trouble. Hello. And this here is me soon-to-be wife, Lila. She sings down at Lou's place. Lila? If you'll all please Lila? just calm down, we can. Calm down? I am calm. Lila? Oh, boy. Excuse me? I you don't know. think I'm calm? Honey, I don't think he meant anything. I know. What I mean is if we all quiet down... Excuse me? Rex, does this happen everywhere you go? Pardon me? I arrested you once, but your name wasn't Lila. Jimmy. Was I'm certain we can get things Cramley. sorted out here. Cranley. Yeah, that was it. A Alice, Alice Cranley. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. That was it. Now, what did you say? We need to get in there. Uh, what do you mean, we, Kimosabi? Isn't it? Alice. Monroe! Careful, boy. Jimmy, it's all right. Who's Alice? Who's Alice? She is! Or... She was. Alice Kremley. Sure, it's been a few years, but it's you. I remember you. All right, Monroe. You made your point. Rex? You changed your look. Hey, 
seen bloody babs lately? Monroe, that is enough out of you. Aw, oh, I guess not. She was up in Chino on a murder rap. Barbara? I say was, because I heard she took her last gas back in the summer. <gasps> <laughs> I won't warn you again. The Monahan murder in Burbank. <gasps> Could have been you. No. All right, mister. I won't have you talking about Miss Andy, Lila like that. don't. It's like watching a couple of doped up grizzlies dancing at the circus. can't do that. Neither one of them able to land a punch, but there is a lot of training. Starlet in front of a bank of photographers. Eventually, their hey. posing gets too much for even Burke to bear. Enough! What the Both of you! Hell? <laughs> You're mine, copper. You just wait. Shut up, Andy. You had your chance. Whenever you're ready for round two, you just let me know, little man. Close your pie hole, Monroe. Let's see if we can sort this out like civilized people. The audience disperses and we're left alone. Just the seven of us. We're too shy of our own baseball team. We could probably give the Hollywood stars a run for their money. We'd never make it to the majors, though. Los Angeles can't sustain a major league team. All right. Tempo seems to be flaring a bit. So I think the sooner we get things sorted out, the better for everyone. I couldn't agree more, Lieutenant. All righty, then. For expediency, Mr. Riveter here is being charged with murder. Murderers. Plural. Plural. All right. Murders. But Miss... Lila. All right, Miss Lila. You claim at the time of the murders, Rex was in a bar called... Lou's. Lou's. <laughs> With you. And Lou. And me. And me. Uh, no. No, not, not with me. I wasn't there. Andy. And there were a bunch of other folks that saw him there, too. Rex, what time did you arrive? I really couldn't... Say. Uh, uh, about eight o'clock, I think. Sweetie, does that sound right? I figure it about then, sure. And how late did you stay? I, um... Eleven. I was asking Rex. Sorry. Well, it might have been eleven. Might it have been earlier? No, it definitely was not earlier. I was thinking, uh, more like, uh, eleven thirty. Eleven thirty. Sure. Lila here was just going on for another set. That's right, I was. Psh, Lila. And you'll swear to this in a court of law. <laughs> and the Bible. You bet I will. That's how it happens. And so this did. Lou will corroborate your story. Uh, yes. Absolutely. Lieutenant, you can't be thinking about letting him walk. For now. Lieutenant! You can't! If River killed those two men, we'll find out about it. We are the finest police force in the world. We have every scientific technique known to man at our disposal. We'll check prints on bodies and surrounding areas. We'll canvas the neighborhood again. We pride ourselves on professionalism. Believe you me, Riveter. If you're guilty, we will find out. We will find out, and you will be arrested. The Los Angeles Police Department does not make miss. Hiya, boys. What I miss? 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 Oh, gee, Lieutenant, you all right? You look like you've seen a ghost. Tonight's episode of Rex Riveter Private Eye starred Randy Cool and Rhiannon McAfee and featured Nick Young as Lieutenant Burke, Dave Rivas as Angelo Martin, and Adam Sheldon as Sergeant Monroe. With guest stars Tom Stewart as Jimmy Sloan, Don Oluwa as Lila, and Greg McAfee as Andy. It was written by Greg McAfee and produced in San Diego, California by Downstairs Entertainment in association with Davey Boy Productions. Rex Riveter is directed by Rhiannon McAfee with sound engineering and technical direction by Dave Rivas. Rex Riveter Private Eye is a proud part of the Fate Crafter Studios Network. Find other great shows at www.fatecrafters.net. 
The Rex Riveter theme song, Nightmare, by the Artie Shaw Orchestra, is used with permission of Music Sales Corp. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, please find us on the internet at www.dsentertain.com or on the Facebook or the Twitter. If you love our show, you can donate to its production costs at www.patreon.com slash rexriveter and get access to exclusive content like gag reels and outtakes from recording sessions. For Downstairs Entertainment, this is Greg McAfee speaking. 